This is an average user's experience review of the entry-level hi-fi speaker system, the Vanitu Transparent Zero Plus. Welcome back. So these small but mighty speakers are pretty awesome, but I do want to preface this video with a quick disclaimer. I am by no means an audiophile. All of my audio and speaker takes are gonna be based on my actual real world listening experience, not just scientific data and stuff like that. But for a more technical review, definitely check out some links down in the description below the like button. And lastly, Vanatu did send me these speakers for review, but as with all of my videos, integrity is super important to me, so you're only ever going to get my honest thoughts here. So with that out of the way, let's dive in. Now, if you've already watched my review of the Vanatu Transparent One Encore Plus, which are like the bigger sibling of these speakers, you can skip ahead to the next section because a lot of this information in the setup section is gonna be pretty much the same. Long story short here, these are very simple to set up and come with everything you need right in the box. Because these are active or powered speakers, Vanatu actually calls them a speaker system, you don't need any extra audio equipment to get these up and running. So as opposed to passive speakers, which require an external amp in order to generate the sound, these have a built-in amp into the right speaker, which lets it generate its own sound and it has tuning options, and we'll come back to all of that in a little bit. The back of the speaker includes every input option you could possibly need. Analog, USB, digital optical, digital coax, and Bluetooth 5. And while it doesn't contain every cable for every input, you still get the essentials in the box, including RCA port, three and a half millimeter jack, USB B to A port, plus a very long speaker connection cord. So with all of that set up out of the way, let's talk about the design of these speakers. Right away, you can see that these have a really unique design for speakers of these size. I've honestly never seen such an interesting shape before. The angled design isn't just for looks either, because by default, if you place these on a desktop as intended, the drivers are actually gonna be angled directly at your ears. This is actually very important to ensure you're getting the full range of the audio, as opposed to if they were just sitting straight on the desk and angled right at your body. That said, the detachable handle allows you to prop up the speaker if it's placed on the bottom, so if you have these on a shelf or TV console, you can still aim them properly. This immediately makes them flexible right out of the gate, eliminating the need to buy any extra audio equipment or stands. They even have their own pads to protect the desk and it fits right into the plug and play mentality that these were designed with. They're also very compact at only seven and a half inches in height, making them even smaller than other speakers with similar driver sizes. Speaking of, underneath the grill, you're gonna find those two-way drivers, a single one inch soft dome tweeter, as well as a four inch aluminum driver. They look way cooler with the speaker grills removed, so I almost exclusively ran these without the speaker grills on. The overall construction is real wood with this satin black finish that I personally love, though it does pick up fingerprints easily. On the top of the speaker, or I guess kind of like the side of it, is this passive radiator, which is powered by Vanitu's patented clear-base technology. Unlike a ported design, for example, this is gonna offer you a much deeper bass response, and it's kind of difficult to find on other speakers of this compact size, but we'll talk more about that in the next section. And finally, on the rear of the right speaker, which is the active speaker with the built-in DAC, are all of those controls, mirrored input options and adjustment knobs, which, by the way, are also a rare thing to find on small speakers. Overall, I actually really enjoy this design. It's sleek, it's minimal, it's actually super functional. So huge props to Vanatu for this. So my initial impressions with the sound quality was just complete shock. They are so small, but output such an unbelievable amount of sound with striking clarity. The clarity is so good that I was convinced if I removed my monitor, I was gonna be staring Dave Bailey right in the face while I was listening to Glass Animals. So the vocal clarity is amazing, but it's no slouch in the low end either. I will say the lowest lows aren't there. It's still punchy and gets very loud, but it doesn't have quite the crunch or detail that you would expect from a bigger speaker. But these aren't bigger speakers, these are compact speakers and the bass is super impressive for their size. And there's no overshoot, it's really tight bass, meaning that's a great choice for audio listeners and music listeners. Finally, I was really impressed with the overall soundstage. I mean, for such a small footprint, it created a very immersive and surrounding listening experience. The amount of noise coming out of these tiny speakers should not be physically possible. And yet here we are. 
<laughs> I do want to cover off some of the other utility and other features that Vanatu has baked into the DAC. It's really difficult to find all of these other features together on other speakers, and they do add up. The integrated electronics automatically detect input switching. So if you have two sources hooked up like a Mac and PC or a computer and a TV, it knows which one to play automatically and it's super convenient. As I mentioned earlier though, the tuning ability is easily one of my favorite features on this list. You have flexibility in how you want these to sound beyond just their default settings. And that just adds to their appeal. So as you can tell from the naming, the speakers are an upgrade or a refinement from the previous generation. So I don't have any way to test those older versions. I don't have them, but I do wanna highlight some of the features and upgrades that they made. They've upgraded the USB connection so that high res 96 kilohertz playback works over this connection. The remote now has doubled volume increments so you can get a lot more precise when you're changing the volume. And if you've got a subwoofer hooked up, you can also change the volume using the remote. They've also added a balance control which lets you change the center point of the speaker in case you're sitting off axis in the room. Lastly, they say they added improved electronics which means better frequency response, better bass response and output, better EQ, and better coming out of sleep mode and input detection. Okay, and now for price and final recommendation time. So right now these will run you $450 USD, which is not cheap. And I think it's a price a lot of first time speaker buyers are gonna have some trouble with. That said, I think it's important to establish some comparison points so you can really see where their value lies. I've reviewed other bookshelf speakers on this channel that sound pretty great, but cost about half the price of these, which makes them harder to recommend, at least initially. And then I started to think about who these speakers are for, and then it started to all make a little bit more sense to me. I don't think these are for first time speaker buyers necessarily. I think these are more for second time speaker buyers or, or, or they're for first time speaker buyers who want speakers that are going to last many, many years and they don't want to overthink it and probably don't want to buy speakers ever again. What I mean by that is while you could go and spend 150 or 200 bucks on truly entry level budget bookshelf speakers like the Edifier R1280 dBs or the Swan D100s, once you start listening to more and more music on those, you do start to get curious about what potential speaker upgrades would be like. Like if this is just the start, you know, what comes next? These speakers satisfy the needs of anyone looking to achieve excellent, accurate and powerful sound in a compact package, and you are not going to wonder if there's better audio out there. I mean, in essence, you know that there is, but you're not going to wonder about it. You're not gonna feel like you need anything more than what you have. It's a very, very great place to be. So you take that and throw all of the other features on top of it that we've talked about, the built-in DAC, the flexibility, the tuning knobs, the fact that these output such huge sound at such a small compact size, and you start to get a better picture about why these are priced the way that they are. They don't even come close in price to the next tier of true audiophile enthusiast speakers nearing $1,000 or even pricier pro studio monitors, but they occupy a very balanced spot on the price tier list not skipping on parts or quality, not quite breaking into the next tier, but not needing to because these do the job. So I'd recommend these speakers, no question, especially if you're in need of a quality desktop audio setup, or if you're pressed for space and you want something more flexible without compromising on power. Now, if you are looking for speakers that are a bit more affordable, or you're looking on speakers with even more power and more bass, check out the videos on the screen now. I'll also leave links down below in the description. And if this video was helpful at all, please hit that like button and subscribe to see more videos like this one. It really helps the channel out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.